Hi everyone, in this video I figured I would take a few minutes to talk about some of the things brought up in the comments regarding our new playlist, uh, I call it PCDC, which is just an acronym for Personal Computer Deep Cleaning. And I think deep cleaning is a, is a fair phrase to use because we don't just you know take an air can or a duster and just blast the dust out of a system and call it a day. Um, we take each component out, we break it down, tear it down to bare board, bare cooler, um, basically take it apart as far as it will go within reason and thoroughly clean each component, reassemble, sometimes upgrade, although you know you can only go so far with the upgrades, especially nowadays, it's even difficult for me to get a hold of things. Um, but the, the playlist has been largely successful and I wanna take time in this video to talk about some of the things that have been brought up in the comments about why we do what we do, what do we do with components that we uh, swap out in upgrades, um, who, who is eligible, some of the concerns brought up about how we clean things, so uh, I think it'll be interesting, stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. So if you couldn't already tell, this system has not been cleaned yet. It'll actually be cleaned in the next video that's published to this channel. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but for some context, because people wanna know kind of what goes on behind behind the scenes here, why I do things the way I do. Many, many of you have been asking why we don't show reactions to cleanings uh, after the system's clean, why we don't you know, film us bringing the system back to the user and then showing their reaction. Um, there are a few reasons why we don't. Now we, we kind of made an exception in episode two where in the beginning I, I showed Keith uh, through, that was actually my dash cam in my car. Um, Keith was very cool and I asked him up front if he was okay being in video. Usually though, I like to have people, um, if they're going to consent to being in a video, I like to have them sign a small disclosure or at least say publicly to the camera that they're okay being on camera uh, because what could happen, and I know Keith wouldn't do this, which is why I'm using him as an example, uh, but Keith could see that video a year from now and decide, you know what, I don't wanna be on video, that's a violation of my privacy, what have you, and then he could file a, a claim, a privacy claim on the video, and then YouTube would contact me and be like, hey, you need to remove this video or blur his face out or whatever because he's complaining now. Um, if I have proof that I had received consent at the time, then that wouldn't be an issue. Um, it's just, it's it's a lot of paperwork. There's liability involved, and I know that's like a stupid cop-out, but at the end of the day, in the States, you can be sued for literally anything. Ask me how I know that. Um, I, I just wanna play it safe, and, and I wanna keep things simple without losing sight of the end goal here, which is to clean the system. The end goal of the video is not to show a reaction, um, although I understand how that could add additional value to the video uh, in question. My goal personally is just to clean the system and show you guys how I clean the system uh, and kind of just let that more or less be satisfying in and of itself. I, it's satisfying to clean these systems, but I understand it's also satisfying to watch the system being cleaned. But another reason for this playlist has to do with timing. Nobody can upgrade right now. And as a result, people are more or less kind of just sitting on older hardware, having to take advantage of systems that maybe have three, four, five year old parts inside, sometimes even older than that, um, two, three, four generations even. It's, it's, it's tough to make that stuff last, especially now with so many new games being so demanding. Uh, so I figured why not help out a bit those who are sitting in these older systems probably haven't cleaned them for the most part. I mean, this system here is pretty dang dirty. The owner of the system actually told me that this GTX 1070 has not been cleaned or repasted in over four years. So that's gonna be fun to clean. Now, something else that's come up a few times in the comment sections, what I do with the hardware that I swap out when I upgrade components. I actually keep a lot of that in the closet with my other inventory and I will reuse those or use those as upgrades for others should that necessity arise. So uh, if somebody, for example, had a GTX 1060 in their system and I upgraded that to a GTX 1080 or an RTX 2060 or 2070, I'll take that 1060, I'll store it for a rainy day. If in the future I get another system in that has say a GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti in it, 
I'll take that 1050 Ti out and then I'll swap it with that 1060 from the previous person's rig. Um, so I'm, I'm more or less recycling the components that I swap out and I'm using those as makeshift upgrades for other folks because to some people a 1060 is a huge upgrade and to others a 1060 is either what they already have or something weaker than what they already have. So um, it's a way to be a bit resourceful and still give people a chance to to experience an upgrade or two uh, without me having to dip too deep into my own pockets or ask manufacturers to send graphics cards, which let's be honest is pretty much futile. Another request I get from a lot of folks is to temperature test before and after. I totally understand why you would request such a thing because some of these systems are caked in dust. This one's not as bad, but um, you, you still are curious, right? You still wanna know, I mean, the backyard, I know you can't see the back right now, but it is is—it is almost completely covered in dust. Some of these PCI slot covers are just are caked in it. Um, so you're, you're curious as to how the airflow is affected by the dust and what kind of temperature drops we would experience after a thorough cleaning, especially with a repasting of the GPU and potentially even the CPU. Um, th those, I really wish I could do those kinds of things in this playlist. The problem is you get folks who are very picky about what they have in their systems. My job is obviously not to go through the software. That's just, that's not me. I'm a hardware guy. I clean the hardware. That's all I really need to do. Now, if I swap a graphics card, let's say I go from Nvidia to AMD or vice versa, I'm gonna need to reinstall drivers. If I can't get into their system or I don't have permission to get into their system, then I have to tell them um, to to upgrade or, or swap software manually. Uh, and even then, you still wanna use, you know, there, there are proper upgrade procedures, right? You wanna use DDE or something very similar um, before you even take the old graphics card out of the system if you're going from NVIDIA to AMD or, or vice versa. So um, there, there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of give and take there. And that's why I usually try to upgrade somebody. If they're on an NVIDIA card, I'll try to upgrade with another NVIDIA card just because it's a lot easier to do that then. You don't necessarily have to DDU. Usually you can just upgrade in GeForce Experience or manually on NVIDIA's site. Um, so if you, if, you, if you haven't noticed yet, that's what I try to do. I don't try to swap from NVIDIA to AMD. And, and, and there's a lot of... Uh, I don't want to say fanboyism, but there are people who prefer one over the other. Um, some are hardcore AMD fanboys or fangirls, and they don't want to see NVIDIA in their system, and I totally get that. Uh, same goes for the other way around. Um, so I try to stay true to the to the brand that they already have in their system, not necessarily from AIB to AIB, but at least from NVIDIA to, to AMD there. Um, the other concern I have is if I do hop into their system and I download this th these, these programs and all of a sudden something happens and the whole operating system is corrupt and you know it, it's a very, very rare thing, I understand, but I have to again talk about liability because if on the off chance I happen to install a program and off the cuff, the entire operating system crashes and is non-recoverable, there might be a ton of sensitive data on that drive that I have on paper lost for this individual and I could be liable for whatever is on there. Um, so again, I, I just try to stick to the hardware. If, God forbid, I screw up something on the hardware side, uh, unless it's a storage drive, which those are pretty difficult to screw up, um, I can just replace it and more or less upgrade. Um, I, some of these components, like this stuff here is pretty modern. This is a GTX 1070. I think he's got a 3600 uh, Ryzen 5 CPU in here. Um, this is probably the most modern build yet that we have to clean uh, in the playlist, but um, I can usually replace things like this if I happen to screw something up. It hasn't happened yet, thankfully, uh, but if it, if it ever happens, I do have plenty of hardware to, to swap with. Uh, but when it comes to software, that's a lot more difficult to, to recover, not only, but if it's non-recoverable, then I, I can't really replace that. And you just you just never know. You know, you meet you meet strangers doing this kind of thing, and someone might seem really cool on the surface, but then end up being very vindictive if they're if their drive, if their data is totally lost. Not that I would really blame them, especially if there was very sensitive stuff on it to begin with. Um, so liability is the other reason there. I wish I could go in and test every system before and after the cleaning, but it, it just is not feasible. It's not in my best interest as an individual or on behalf of the company. Now this one's more or less nitpicking, but I do see a few people complaining still that I use shop towels or just paper towels in general to clean some of these components. Um, that was the case in the very first episode. Uh, and until I got the electric duster, yeah, I mean, I, I really had no choice. Uh, but with the electric duster now, I can get a lot of this dust out, especially in between fin stacks and stuff. But 
I still have a need for paper towels. Occasionally you'll have like a surface or two that is, um, it's just, it's got a lot of thick grime on it and the duster's not gonna get that stuff out. You know, those bristles are very soft. Um, so I'll use a shop vac towel or something, or shop vac towel, I'll use a shop towel or something similar with isopropyl alcohol um, and kind of scrub the surface of the fin stack or maybe a, a VRM heat sink or something. And bits of that will, yes, fray. And you'll see little tiny bits of paper towel or whatever stuck in those fins, but they very easily easily blow out with, again, the duster. So I'm not sure why people get so upset when they see me using those. Um, I'm using them because I have no choice and I don't wanna just manually with a small little Q-tip scrub that, that large blemish out. So if I see um, a large stain or something uh, and I, I wanna get a nice smooth finish very quickly, I'll use a shop towel. Sorry, but it's just, it's how I personally prefer to clean. That's something I really wish I could do and I still have people asking if they can is receive shipments. I, I'm not, I, I, I just, I'm not gonna do it. And the reason why should be pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you ever tried shipping anything with UPS, FedEx, USPS, DHL, whoever, um, there's not a 100% guarantee that, that said product will arrive either untampered with or in good condition, <laughs> let's say. Um, I've shipped systems that have been uh, completely destroyed. Uh, and that's actually probably the best description I can think of for what happened to, especially the custom cooled system that was fully drained. You know, I didn't ship it via fright, but um, I didn't think UPS would open it up, literally unscrew things, uh, which is what they did. It's very apparent that that's what they did. They probably ran it through the, the scanner and said, what the heck is this? What are all these tubes? Well, you know, let's open it up, see what it is, make sure it's not a bomb or whatever. And they, they screwed it up. They, they trashed everything. The build was totally useless when it arrived at CES. I have a video talking about it somewhere. But uh, yeah, I just, I don't trust shipping companies flat out. I just don't. I have good friends that work for shipping companies, large shipping companies, and I just don't trust any of them. So um, that's not that I don't trust my friends. I just don't trust the companies at large that they work for. Uh, so uh, that's why I can't accept shipments. I would love to, that would open up a totally new realm of content for this playlist. I know that I could get some really, really dirty systems. Some of you look at this system, you're like, oh, this isn't too bad. And it, it's really not. I have seen photos of systems that look like they've gone through dust storms. Um, and that those would make for awesome transformations on this playlist. I'm, I'm again, not against cleaning really disgusting systems. Problem is, seeing as though I can only really accept systems from people who live locally in and around Orlando, Florida, um, I'm limiting my potential audience, the, the, the potential supply of dirty systems out there. Um, and so that's why I have Lisa kind of combing through the ones that look especially dirty. You guys wanna see those mighty transformations. The only way to do that is to ensure that we more or less hand pick the ones that are the dirtiest. And like I said, we have several, several in the queue. I'm excited to show you guys how dirty they are and uh, also to show you how clean we can get them in the end. And one last thing to discuss, power supplies. A few of you are still dissatisfied with the fact that I'm not fully cleaning power supplies. I'm not taking them apart down to bare board and you know, cleaning those things thoroughly like I do graphics cards or whatever else is in the system. Um, power supplies are dangerous. Uh, there, there are capacitors in here that hold charges long-term and there's enough of a charge in a lot of those things to kill a human, um, to easily kill a human actually. And I'm not interested in, in dying anytime soon. So uh, I, I'm just playing it very safe here, very conservative. I, I don't want to um, risk destroying the power supply at the very least, but I also don't wanna hurt myself uh, and what I try to do is just take the electric duster and get as much dust out of the, the main compartment in the power supply as possible. I'll even take my needle nose pliers and try to pull some dust bits out if I find them. Someone accused me of like planting dust and, and extracting it with tweezers. I did that apparently in two or three different, well no, it wasn't in three videos. I think it was two videos where I did that. And um, that's, that's absolutely absurd. I would never plant dust I don't know why that would, like, these systems are already dirty enough. This doesn't make sense. But anyway, I was accused of that, at least from what I understood. Um, that doesn't happen here. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, and yeah, so power supplies. I know it's disappointing. It's not a truly thorough, like, complete cleaning of a system if I'm not fully cleaning and tearing down the power supply, but uh, there's a good reason for that. Most of you have been very forgiving in that regard. With that, if you guys have any additional comments or questions that I haven't answered already in this particular video, I can always upload a, another one later on if I have enough questions to address. Uh, worst case, I'll just answer your questions on Twitter or maybe on Facebook, but uh, I, I just, 
I, I've noticed a, a trend, some people bringing up things that, that uh, difficult to respond to, all of them, you know, I don't want to copy and paste the same comment 50 times, although I have done that in the past, it's not the best way to respond to people on a personal level, so I figured I'd make a video uh, bringing up a lot of those uh, concerns and questions that many have had, or just observations in the playlist. Um, this is, again, the next PC to be cleaned, it will come up, it will be episode five in the playlist. And I think we're gonna do five more for this season. And then what I'll do is try to get ahead, I'll clean, I'll still continue cleaning systems in between seasons and then we'll have uh, enough episodes lined up for season two, hopefully by the middle of this year. And then we'll start uploading or publishing those one week at a time. So every weekend, let's say, we'll have another episode airing. Um, so that's it's more consistent. And I'll continue doing this so long as the videos receive like you know, okay views. They don't have to receive hundreds of thousands of views, but the enthusiasm for this playlist has been um, very encouraging. It has been um, awesome to see, and I'm thankful for uh, for all of your support uh, in, in this endeavor so far. So um, keep watching, more to come. This thing looks pretty disgusting, and for some reason, I'm excited to clean it. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.